let's go. Let's park the road. We just bought this house in this beautiful neighborhood in Marine Park in Brooklyn, New York. We're gonna flip this house and make complete transformation over the next six weeks or so. This is gonna be our first flip in 2021. We can't wait to get started. And we have flipped a couple of houses in other neighborhood. And this is the first one that we come into this area. We pay a little bit more for this house. And for the reason that this house structure and everything's very good, it got good ball, nothing much that we need to, you know, uh, major to major changes. It has two bedrooms, two bathrooms, a little over 1,000 square feet. Unlike other hoarder houses that we previously did, this one is in pretty decent condition. That's why we pay a little bit more than we would normally pay for a flipping project. But it took us a few months to get this one in contract. I have another video about how I get this deal. The other reason is I just sold one, a few houses down that way, for my client last, last, um, last year. It was same square footage, same layout, exa everything exactly the same. So that gives us more confidence. You can't get a better come than that. It also took a lot longer to close this deal than we expected. We pay all cash. Normally cash deal takes probably seven to 10 days to close. We should be selling it by now. Instead, we waited for two months. It was like title issue, mortgage payoff didn't record it because COVID got everything delayed. And on top of that, it was December, a holiday season. We have a Christmas, we have a new year. Thanks for our attorney, Milan Rengik. He was on top of everything like he always does. Keep us informed all the time. By the way, we have another video that he will be talking about what you should be expecting during the process, either you are buyer or seller. The attorney should perform the proper due diligence on the property, make sure the taxes are proper, make sure the CFO is in place, make sure there are no liens judgments against the property. You wanna make sure that you're getting marketable title when you're purchasing a house. By now, let's go check out the house. So let's go check it out. Let's go check it out. Okay, come on in. So as you can see, even the house is in a decent condition, but every finishing needs to be updated. I love there's a big window in the front. It's gonna bring tons of natural light. So we're gonna put a new flooring, new trim, fresh new coat paint. And also we're gonna remove this fan and patch up the wall. We're gonna install Douglas mini split unit. One receiver is gonna be here. The other receiver is gonna be in one of the bedrooms upstairs. So moving on to the living room. So here's the living room. This is the dining, living, Combo. The style is very common in this neighborhood. Even though it's not that big, but I'm fine with it. It has plenty of room to put a six-person dining table here. Either this way or either horizontal. It's gonna have plenty of room to make this look like a formal dining area. I've seen some investors, they change the layout. They will seal up this wall and put a kitchen right here. So the, the kitchen cabinet here and the big island in front right here, which is make open space, make the living room smaller, but they have open space. So it's kind of like dining slash living slash dining slash open kitchen. And then put a turn that kitchen in the back to a one bedroom. So that turn two bedroom to three bedroom or three bedroom to four bedroom, that increases the four, probably fifty to sixty thousand dollars resale value. So the problem is, if you don't have a side door here, which is a semi detached, you cannot have a side door here. The only way you can access to the backyard is through that bedroom, or you have to go out from the front door, go through the shared drive driveway to your backyard. I'm not sure. I'm not a fan for that design. So I'm gonna just leave it the way it is. And instead, I'm probably, we're probably going to open up this staircase and you can see through to the back and make the space look much bigger. So let's move on to the kitchen. Take, check out the kitchen. The kitchen space is decent. 
obviously everything needs to be gone. So we have two options. One is just traditional L shape. So the fridge is going to be here and sink and wrench and wrench hood. Another option is since we have a pipe here already, the gas pipe here already, we want to put a wrench hood. Maybe we put a wrench hood right here. So that way we have a fridge, fridge right there and wrench hood here. And upper cabinet on both sides of the window. The sink stay where it is. So this way we don't have to relocate any pipes. Everything stay where it is. And this option will make this kitchen looks bigger. So we're going to set up a laundry area in this corner. So let's go check out the second floor. There's a little window here. It's like in the restaurant. You can transport dishes or something like that. The staircase is solid, strong. We'll just send it down and stain it. Paint the riser and the railing all white. Upstairs has two bedrooms and a full bathroom. Nice hardwood floor throughout. We can just refinish it. The two bedrooms are similar size. This one is slightly bigger than the other one because they have this huge closet space. The room is not that big, but it has plenty space for queen size bed. And I love the closet space. I'll make a two double door closet. And this is weird. This is the ladder it goes to the attic. It's inside the bedroom. So if you have a queen size bed here, you don't even have space to open it up. So we're going to close this up and move the stairs to the hallway, which makes more sense. I will remove this closet, give this space back to the bathroom and come take a look at the bathroom. And the double vanity here and toilet here and the bathtub right here. So that's going to be standard layout for the bathroom. Standard cells. So that's all matters. So the width of this bathroom is a little bit short. So it doesn't fit the standard bathtub. So we're going to remove this wall, push this wall into that other size a little bit, which is the closet of the other bedroom. Make this space fit a standard bathtub. Now let's go take a look at the backyard. All right, let me show you the backyard. Come on. It was basically clean it up, you know, from the outside and give it a, a new uh, type of paint that's rust, you know, prevent rust in the future. And we're probably going to waterproof the system outside, the, the parameter and also under the floor there. And there's electrical and there's lighting there also. So this is a nice backyard. So what we're going to do, we're going to clean it up and stage it. All right, let me show you the basement. Basement ceiling is very low, but that's what you get in this neighborhood. Like 80% of the time, you're gonna get a basement just like this for a single family here in Brooklyn. We pretty much can't do anything about it. What we can do is we can install maybe six resized lights on the ceiling to lighten up the space, rip out the carpet, put new old tiles, paint the wall summer white color, cover that thick window in the back. That window is useless because the foundation of the porch has covered the view completely. So you will be look something like this. So let me show you the back side of it. Basement bathroom over here. Then we're gonna take remove everything and we're gonna give a new refresh, a new bathroom uh, over here. The new bathroom is gonna be look something like this. And these are the boiler. The boiler system is a hot air and we're gonna you know give it a new heating system for this house and we're gonna touch up the entire area over here. We're gonna install a new baseboard heating system. I think that's a very good starting point. I can't wait to get started. I'll have another video after we finish the project so we can see the transformation of before and after. See you next video.